Hello and welcome to the Sensibly Speaking Podcast. This is Chris Shelton, the critical thinker at large. And this is Ruth McLeod, the Southern Atheist. And we are coming at you uh, with another fun-filled episode of uh, politics and all kinds of other fun stuff. And I get pissed off later, so keep it keep, It's keep It's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> uh, she is like a raging volcano. Uh, <laughs> but first... Uh, <laughs> You hey, say we, things like that, yeah. and I have to act it out, okay? <laughs> I have to. Um, first, we wanted to actually mention, um, we uh, are going to be at the Reason Rally. Um, this is actually happening pretty soon, in June. Yeah, um, June and 4th. June 4th, yeah. So we're going to be uh, in Washington, D.C., and we're going to do, um, we're sort of still planning all this out as to how we're going to be there, how we're going to get there, rather, and what we're going to do exactly. But we're, it's a Saturday, and what we're anticipating is, because that's a podcast day, what we're going to do instead of doing a, a formal podcast from here, um, we'll probably do a whole series of live video tweets and, uh, and whatnot um, on the day and post those onto our Twitter, uh, our Sensibly Speaking Twitter account. We have a Twitter? We do have I'm a Twitter. I'm kidding. I know we have a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not following it, you should. Yeah. And, um, Am I following it? You, what's that? Am I following it? I hope so. I should I, probably check that. I'm following it. Excuse me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're going to post uh, updates to our Twitter feed that day. We know we're going to do that. And um, hopefully meet and greet with a whole bunch of people. And we may uh, also be on TV the following day on uh, Sunday uh, on, the, on the Road to Reason. We'll see what happens with what? that. I know. It's crazy. I'm excited. So, yeah, totally. I'm totally following us on Twitter. <laughs> so I think we're going to have fun with that. And uh, definitely would encourage anybody who has any interest in skepticism, humanism, secularism, atheism, reason of any kind to go to the Reason Rally in Washington, D.C. on June 4th. It's, it's it's going to be amazing. And by the way, cherry blossoms are in full bloom in D.C. right now. It's fantastic. Yeah. It gets a little humid in D.C., but it's absolutely lovely. Go see a Smithsonian. Come to the rally. Come see us. It's going to be fantastic. It'll be awesome. be my first time in Washington, D.C. I am, I am really, really can't wait. Yeah, never been there. What? Yeah, so... I mean, it's, you know, I, I, when I go, I mean, I'm going to go do this. I want to go back for, like, literally two weeks. Yeah. And, like, visit everything, you know, Dude, Capitol, Monuments, it's, it's the fun. Smithsonian. It's fun. So want to go do that. So want to do that. Lots of information. You just soak it up like a sponge. That's exactly. It's like a huge sponge. What, what is this? I'm just, I'm just sucking up all the, all the water. <laughs> sucking up all that knowledge. You, I'm hitting my mic. <laughs> I need Be nice. To stop. <laughs> nice to the mics. Oh, thank you. So, um, so anyway, good times with that, and you'll be hearing more about the um, Reason Rally from us over the next few weeks as we formalize and finalize our plans, mm -hmm. and uh, you know where we're gonna stay and how we're gonna do um, maybe a little um, short show from the hotel maybe after the days of activities unless of course you know we're gonna party like it's 1999 because there's gonna be room. tons of parties out there it's gonna be fun yeah so um so that is the reason rally and otherwise we got a whole boatload of stuff to go over news items and various things so we're gonna get right to it a boat In the news this week, um, our first article is, um, you know, we just love Donald Trump. We do. We love him. I don't have nice words to say, so I'm not supposed to say anything at all. <laughs> um, there was an open letter to Trump voters um, published by, uh, let me get this name here, and just because I'm the resident name butcherer. Uh, I, get, him say I, I get the, I get the name duty here. Uh, Stephanie Kig, Kiegelski, Sigelski, Stephanie. I like uh, watching you. Like, yeah, I suffer. Your way I just suffer things. here. It's kind of funny. She, Stephanie, anyway. uh, here, Sigel, Sigelski. 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 
She was apparently a staffer uh, for one of Donald Trump's uh, super PACs, the great Make America Great Again super Super PAC. PAC. So Um, she was not a direct staffer for Donald Trump. Right. When it comes to PACs and super PACs, super PACs are not directly associated with the campaign for who they are advocating for. Um, Mm -hmm. they, They run campaigns but it, it'll never at the end of it say i'm so and so and i approve this message no it'll also always say you know paid for by this Foundation make america Super great Pac. again right so yeah. she she was not directly with trump right. and she wasn't like his top strategist or whatever strategist right. or whatever That's, and the article um, does have some misleading wording in regards to that yes right saying she was a top strategist for his campaign that's not her role but um, we We did our due diligence on that part just to make sure um, that we had that information correct. Right. Which is what I think, you know, we try to do. Sometimes we miss, but whatever, it's fine. Yeah. Um, But the the main point of this article is what really came out to to me and Chris. Exactly. Um, And it starts off with, even Trump's most trusted advisors, advisors didn't expect him to fare this well. Um, Now, she gets recruited for her PR and public policy expertise, and she says she goes and she works for, uh, she says she works for the the super PAC, right? And she talks about her role and her work in that, um, and how she was a true believer in what Donald Trump was doing and saying. um, Because he was, as she says here, I fell in love with the idea of a protest candidate who was not bought by corporations. And as we will talk about later in the show, um, that actually does matter, yeah. you know, because um, because pretty much 99.9% of our politicians are. Um, so she says here that she thought, you know, that this guy who was a self-made millionaire, et cetera, et cetera, straight talker, you know, lots of successes. And so she signed up and she was the communications director of the Make America Great Again super PAC, or at least that's what she says she signed on to be. And they hit the ground running, and uh, Jeb Bush was the main contender at that point with his uh, $100 million super PAC that he had uh, working for him. So deep pockets, etc. Now she says, um, after the first debate, I was more anxious than ever to support Trump. The exchange with Megyn Kelly was like mana from heaven for a communications director. Um, you know, she just thought that this was going to be great. The media was, was, you know, bang, bang, banging on Trump. And that controversy, of course, was going to, you know, end up with lots of media attention, which it did. Um, and she was inspired. Then she said, something surprising and absolutely unexpected happened. Every other candidate misestimated the anger and outrage of the silent majority of Americans who are not part of the liberal elite. So with each statement, these outrageous statements that uh, that Donald is making, came a jump in the polls. Just when I thought we were finished, the Donald gained more popularity. I don't think even Trump thought he would get this far, and I don't even know that he wanted to, which is perhaps the scariest prospect of all. And that really encapsulates sort of the point of this article, right? Is here's a staffer, and and we can get into more specifics of what she talks about here, but the bottom line is that that there's an idea here that that we floated months ago based on earlier articles and, and conjecture that maybe Donald wasn't wasn't serious about getting into the Oval Office, right? That he was just doing this to increase his brand, increase his popularity, see what he could do, maybe... It's an you ego know. boost. It right. really is. It's, it's his ability to now say, I could have done that. Right. And, and it kind of gives him an easy out. Like, he didn't actually do it. But the fact that he could say that he could have if he wanted to, he just wanted to back off. And it it just keeps snowballing from there. The, That's right. The outrageous things that come out of his mouth. And every single time he says something that sounds so outrageous, these mass of people come up and agree with him. And it's starting to... Because at first, you know, you have this idea of people who support Trump... And, you know, and, and they're stereotypical ideas. And when I try to stay away from that, 
I'm not always the best at it, but whatever. <laughs> and But now it's just the more and more supporters that I see and the videos that I see of their rallies, it makes me more and more scared of the type of community that's coming out from this. Well, exactly. It's the thing that I am um, bothered by about it is the is it's rough to use this word but i'll use the word ignorant now Mm -hmm. ignorant is an offensive word to most people you call somebody ignorant they get pissed off yeah really all it means is that there is you're saying that there is information you don't have right that's it it's really all the word means you you don't know something i am ignorant of all kinds of things yep right tons of stuff i'm totally ignorant of And I don't really have a problem being called out on that, right? I'm ignorant of Middle Eastern affairs. I'm ignorant of what goes on in in most parts of Africa and South America. Mm -hmm. You know, foreign policy is, you know, whatever. Um, So I don't have a problem with the word ignorant, but a lot of people do. I I think um, that a lot of Trump supporters are ignorant of various things. Um, First and foremost the true intentions of the guy they're supporting. I think I think that is the number one thing that they're ignorant of. And, and I <laughs> he never know, meant to be. I don't know if they would know? read this article. I, I don't know. That's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about or it. Or right? if they would, I, 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 I wonder what kind of things, what kind of cognitive di- dissonance that you would have to pull out of your rear to make this happen. I, you know, I don't know. If we have Trump supporters watching, I'd be very interested in any feedback on this. Oh, um, I mean, I know, have... I know the reasons why people are following Trump. What what escapes me is how they think that Trump will actually pull off what he's promising. I I have literally heard of people, even at our beloved hub, tell me that if the candidate that they want is not the nominating or the nomination or doesn't get the nomination, they're voting for Trump, and they are dead serious. And if you watch this, I want to have a conversation with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so again, according to this article, uh, Trump never intended to be the candidate, but his pride is too out of control to stop him now. Um, his ego. You can give Trump the biggest gift possible if you're a Trump supporter. Stop supporting him. He doesn't want the White House. He just wants to be able to say that he could have run the White House. He's achieved that already and then some. If there's any question, take it from someone who was recruited to help the candidate succeed and initially very much wanted him to do so. This is sort of a Trump apostate. Yeah. Is what we have here, right? I I was never on board with the Trump thing. I, I think right away it sounded like the most ludicrous idea that has ever crossed my brain to have... Okay, and this might be because I worked for Sharper Image when Trump tried to sell steaks. And it was a phenomenal disaster. And I had to listen to Trump on a on a DVD constantly talk all day long about how his steaks were better than any other meat in America. And I don't know why this was even a thing. That he was, had... They were selling these steaks through the Sharper Image. Yes. Which is, of course, where I go for all my steaks. Well, it was like the Omaha Steak Company, where where you like you order like a big pack, and maybe you get like hot dogs and this kind of steak and that kind of steak and some hamburger and this and that, and it gets shipped to you. But he, yeah, well, just listening to this man talk about meat forever turned me off to having to listen to this man for four years total and make decisions and whatnot for this com- for this country. Oh, that's almost, I almost had a Freudian slip just there. I almost <laughs> called this a company because that, that's what would happen. This man would run this place like a company right. into the ground like he has run every other thing that he's ever done. Exactly. I've, I've made the point before that he seems to think that as the president of the United States, he would be the CEO of America. And that is not the point of the president of the United States. And I really, truly believe that Donald Trump does not understand, or at least the personality, the persona that he presents as his political self, does not understand basic civics in terms of you know how the government actually works. I, because his policy <laughs> positions don't indicate an understanding of, of that. And I've said it once before, and I'm going to say it again, 
people are, are supporting Trump because they say, oh, well, he's, he's not a politician. This is the president of the United States. He has to be a politician. It, it has to happen. You have to have that credential to have this job because this, it's, it's, it's not a corporation. It's not a hospital. It's a freaking country, and the way that you run it is in politics. So you need to have a politician. I'm sorry. I'm. Yeah, I you know I get it. I now, I just blew up like a little bit of a volcano right there. Okay, you know do, it's do it's just building it? building up on its way. Do you see this? So thing? yes, I, I do. You're not looking. I, I wow. <laughs> <laughs> now Stephanie goes on to say this, which I wanted to read to y'all. Um, if you haven't seen the article, um, she says. Uh, the hard truth is Trump only cares about Trump. Um, and if you were one of the disaffected voters, one of the silent majority like me, who wanted a candidate who could be your voice, I want to speak directly to you as one of his biggest advocates and supporters. He is not that voice. He is not your voice. He is only Trump's voice. Trump is about Trump. Not one of his many wives, not one of his many pieces of ass, he is at heart a self-preservationist. Um, so that is really the bottom line of this article, the bottom line of what we wanted to go over about Trump, um, because I just don't believe for a microsecond that he is the um, person who should step, who should, who should, you know, be the president. Not because he's not. A, I don't. I don't particularly have the view that he shouldn't be the president because he's not a politician. Because I think career politicians have its own has its own set of of problems connected with it. But you know, if you're going to get into this game, at least understand what the actual game is. And I don't think he really does, or the how to get that things done. You get into done. the game and understand how the game is. You is you're a politician. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I guarantee you, someone out there is googling Trump stakes. <laughs> Look it up. You'll only find it at Sharp Image, and they don't sell it anymore because it failed. Exactly. It failed. They even tried to give all the employees who sold them, like, incentives. Never worked. I think in my, and all the time I worked for Sharp, for uh, Sharper Image, and we had Trump Steaks, I sold one package. Wow. For $50. Wow. Well, that's why they went steak <laughs> up. Steak <laughs> They had to pull up their steaks. And leave town. Stop. <laughs> Please stop. All right, so moving on to our next article here, which also is related to Donald Trump, but moves into totally different territory that we both have pretty strong opinions about. Uh, I'm going to blow up some more, aren't I? Probably. All right. Um, Y'all you you all might uh, have heard about Donald Trump making um, a statement and then rescinding it, surprisingly, about abortion and about women should be punished if they have an abortion and the the way the the way the 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 questioning went is okay well you know would you support abortion being made illegal and then okay well if it was illegal then should women be punished right and he walked into this with well yes and well yes it, it should be okay and and come stemming from the art uh from the article that we just spoke about and this one here trump has got to be saying things just to piss people off so that he can get out of this right oh my god now that is actually a total point because i i yes and thank you for bringing that up because i actually think at this point given what we have gone over and, and talked about about trump like, uh -huh. all this time one wonders how he is still like like the stuff that comes out of his mouth is just more and more and more outrageous yes right he and has to be saying it so the mass amount of people will eventually go no -uh, and walk away from him you, right but the problem is he keeps saying stuff that these <laughs> that these outrageous people are like yeah exactly bravo and, and and you got to He's got to be going home at night, going. I just can't make them not like me. That's right. And that's got to be good for his ego. It's got to be. I mean. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> it's it's just the snake, you know, eating its tail, I guess. It, now, okay, so he said on Wednesday um, that if abortion were illegal, women should be punished, and then he took it back. Now, the really interesting thing about this is that is that pundits and commentators on the left and the right 
both came out against Trump on this point. Which surprised me. Big time surprised me too. I was very surprised. Um, not by the left, of course, mm-hmm. right? Because when you have a, um, you know, a pro-abortion stance, and this is, you know, some guy says, well, we should punish all the women. Of course, you're going to be like, you know, you're a dog and, you, and you're scum and you're horrible and, and stop saying that, right? But to have the anti-abortion people step up and say, that was off the rails. That surprised me, right? Yeah. Um, Gene Mancini, president of the March for Life Education and Defense Fund, said, We have never advocated in any context for the punishment of women who undergo abortion. Ooh, did I stop right. you from saying what this article is and who wrote it and where it's from? I think I did. You did. This was Time, Time Magazine article. Jill. Oh, you just want me to say that. She just wants me to do this again. No, I, I know how to say it. I just want him to do it. Filipovic? Jill Filipovic? Sure. Let's keep going. Sure. Let's go with that. Okay, so um, actually, I just I just misquoted there the the quote from Jean Mancini, which I'm sure I'm getting right, was no pro lifer would ever want to punish a woman who has chosen abortion. That's Jean Mancini. Also, we have Marjorie uh, Dannenfelser. Again, I'm getting that one right. It's Dannenfelser. Okay. And she is um, uh, of the anti-abortion rights group Susan B. Anthony list. Okay, so there's this group. Uh, And she said we've never advocated in any context for the punishment of women who undergo abortion. Punishment is solely for the abortionist who profits off of the destruction of one life and the grave wounding of another. So this is really interesting as positioning goes. The anti-abortion crew are now or maybe are they're saying, I haven't followed this long enough to know, um, but are but are positioning themselves now as being pro women. Yes, they always have. Okay. Um, they've always had that guise of being pro women, because um, the concept is, if a woman is going to get an abortion, um, we're somehow being duped uh, into right. getting an abortion, and it's the actual um, like Planned Parenthood and any other abortion providers are the evil ones here. Uh, women are always the victims. Um, and we don't know enough about what other options that we have. Right. As and so, a, yeah. Yeah. So they're always for women somehow. Right. Now, here is where the article takes a sharp left turn. In, um, and she says this. In terms of the whole point of being pro-women and that it's all about, you know, helping women. The article writer says these are lies, but they are also reveal an important idea underpinning the anti-abortion rights movement in the U.S. It's not about the life of the embryo or fetus. It's certainly not about helping or protecting women. It's about hostility to women's social advancement, which has been rapid and which would have been wholly impossible without access to contraception and abortion. And it's not just Trump whose antipathy towards women's rights and freedoms plays out particularly pronouncedly around abortion rights. It's Ted Cruz. It's the anti-abortion movement, and it's most of the Republican Party. The argument that women would not or should not go to jail for abortion is absurd when one notes that there are women in the United States who have, in fact, gone to jail for abortion. And she proceeds to list out a number of uh, women in situations across the world where there are people in jail right now because well, of this. Well, it's across the world. It's also in the United States. Yeah. This isn't like a Brazil, you know, they're having the Zeta outbreak, and so women are trying to get abortions. No, no, no. This is here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Women have gone to jail, are in jail now because of abortion. Right. And uh, the article goes on, American anti-abortion advocates say they would target abortion providers instead of women because it's apparently more acceptable to throw doctors in prison for providing care that saves women's lives every single day. Or you just shoot them. Even if you think that sounds okay, it belies an ignorance of how illegal abortion often works. Now, this is where the article really gets down and dirty about how if if you're anti-abortion, you are actually putting forward an agenda that is going to potentially kill a lot more women mm-hmm. 
as well as these, you know, fetuses or whatever, then embryos. is going to save them. Yeah, embryos, right? Zygotes, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Point is that you're actually pushing an agenda where you are forcing women to either do a self abortion, mm-hmm. right? Which the article goes into in detail, uh, which can which has led to deaths. Right? Yes. Because because women don't especially some of the women who get involved in this don't have a clue how to do it, right? They have their boyfriend punch them or they throw themselves downstairs or they start doing the invasive Take a things to themselves. And jam it up there and, yeah. and try to wiggle it around enough to kill something. Right. Usually themselves. Usually themselves, exactly. So so there's and and this is a, this is uh, I think a pretty important point to be made on this on this whole thing is the is there's a there's a hypocrisy on the part of the anti-abortion advocates mm-hmm. uh, where you can't give a woman the right to have safe medical care because because the doctors are the criminals and you actually can't have the right to do what you want to with your body because that embryo is a life and the article then goes into detailing how that's not even true because of the way anatomy and physiology work there's tons of these embryos dying by all other kinds of means all day every day and no one is pushing for any medical research to save them so chris chris kind of pointed at me and, and laughed a little bit while he said that because in our show prep and I'm reading this article and I'm getting madder and madder and madder because this article essentially starts explaining to me about my own body. And I'm like, all right, skip, skip, skip. I know this information. And the problem is before Chris or a lot of other people read this, they didn't. And that's what pisses me off. That's what got me so angry because I know that medically it's not considered a pregnancy until a fertilized egg implants itself into the uterine wall because that thing if it doesn't implant gets flushed out with our menstrual cycle i've always known this information i you know and i might have known it at one time um, but and some, you know, it, it, the the stress and importance of it had had escaped me in regards to this issue. Let's put it that way. Or an or an implant or a uh, fertilized egg gets stuck in the fallopian tube. Or well, okay, so it it gets stuck in the tube and sperm get, goes up in the tube and implants and it it and fertilizes and all that. And yeah. then it starts growing in the fallopian tube, which can potentially kill the the woman. Right. And so that's not going to be a viable egg or anything at all. Anyway, it needs to be removed. It has to be. And, and, and strictly speaking, that's an abortion. Yes. And yet these people want to take away the right to save women's lives. Right? Because there are people, I mean, and I don't even want to hear about this in the comments, that there are, that there are people who don't push for this. Because there are people who are 100% absolutely positively... No abortions of any kind are ever acceptable right. under any circumstances, like, including active politicians in office right now who yeah. don't concede any exceptions for rape, incest, or medical necessity. necessity, right? There are people in office right now who take that position, and it's completely off the rails. And also, an implanted egg that's fertilized and implants itself can actually detach and get flushed out as well. I mean, there's lots of ways... That women have had... Okay, we've... I asked you this question. Do you know how many miscarriages I've had? I don't either. Because I I almost guarantee you, I have. Most women have. Because it comes out in our periods. Because it's so early of a pregnancy and it gets flushed out because our body naturally rejects it. Right. This this is... This so, is information that I've just always known. Uh-huh. I learned about it, not necessarily in health class, but because I was curious about my own damn body. And I figured it out. And guess what? I've never had to have an abortion. I've never had an unplanned pregnancy. I don't have children. Because I know enough about my body to take a fucking pill every goddamn day. 
which leads us to our next point on this particular topic, which is again a point of hypocrisy on the part of, anti, of the anti-abortion crew, which is if you want to reduce or get rid of abortion, if you want to just get rid of the practice, the way to do that is not to outlaw it. The way to do it is through education and through, uh, well, here, right out of the article again, what has been shown over and over to decrease the abortion rate is access to affordable contraception, especially long-acting methods like IUDs. The countries with the lowest abortion rates in the world not only offer abortion legally and often for free, but also make birth control easy to get, offer comprehensive sex education in schools, and don't rely primarily on shame or fear to keep young people from having sex. Yet not a single major American anti-abortion organization supports affordable contraception access. None of them advocate for comprehensive sex ed. You and know this why. is this is where it runs right up against my purpose of educating people and in being, you know, we're trying to talk sensibly about this. This I is can't, most, I'm too mad. This is the most unsensible practice I've ever seen because statistics and the data clearly show that if you want to reduce abortion and you want to actually get rid of it as a practice, these are the things you do. Which we know this to be a fact. In Colorado, in our own little state here, we enacted a program that gave, what was it, 30,000 women? 30,000 women. 30,000 women IUDs. access yeah. to a free IUD if they wanted it. Our 40 pregnancy drop. rate dropped 40%. Our abortion rate dropped 35%. That's right. And save they taxpayers $80 shocked. million dollars in Medicaid costs. And, and Okay, this, this, this is what makes me blow up. It is so simple. You want to, you want to stop having so many people on WIC and on SNAP and on Medicaid? You want to stop that? Give women access to birth control. Teach them how they get pregnant. Teach them about their bodies. Teach men about women's bodies. Teach men about their own damn bodies. Teach kids when they're going to start having sex, usually in their teens, because honestly, who had sex when they were in their teens? Put your hand up. I actually did. I know you did. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. You told me. I did. Sorry, Chris's parents. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but teach them this information. That's right. Because, because you're I not going to stop them. You're not going to stop them from having sex. No, if they can do it, they're gonna. You might as well go ahead and teach them how to do it safely and how to do it in a respectful manner to themselves. Exactly. Because that's the problem that's happened. You have people who are ashamed of their bodies, then they still have sex somehow, even with the shame. They're still freaking doing it. Then they get pregnant, and then they freak out. And so they either try to do an abortion on themselves, sneak around, go to a Planned Parenthood, or they have a child when they're 16, drop out of school, have no more access to education, or they do, and it's incredibly difficult for them to do it, especially because a lot of these religious parents won't allow them to come home again. Ha <laughs> ha, fantastic, very Christian of you. And then... They have these kids, they can't support them because they don't have a proper education, they can't get a good job, and then so they have to go on these food stamps, and WIC, and Medicaid, and, that and then costs it's the whole freaking cycle all over of us. again. Exactly. So you give me a reason that does not include your religious sky daddy to tell me why abortion and, inf and education is not viable. Give me one argument that has nothing to do with religion and we can have a conversation. Until then, this is the most simple thing ever. It's this, the most yeah. simple solution ever. And you will prevent it every step of the way because heaven forbid a woman have access to education and her own goddamn body. I'm mad and I'm sorry. I, and when she, I'm mad, I start to curse. Mm. I start to move my hands all over the place. A little bit of turkey neck starts happening. And well, the point, of course, being here that, role. you know, women should have, you know, freedom to choose. They should have an informed decision. They should be able to make an informed decision through education. And odds are that if, well, not even odds are, statistically speaking, when that education is provided, then most women aren't put in that position of having to make dec informed decisions about abortion anyway. No shit. Because they don't have to get abortions. Oh, no shit. And if this was really, you know, you just when you look at all the facts, you just go, you know, if this was really about abortion and murdering embryos, then the problem could so easily be solved. 
that that can't be what this issue is about. And this is where I go trail back down to a, a fairly anti-religion stance on this particular issue because the misogyny that is demonstrated towards women and teens, um, you know, teen girls, by the religious right in this yeah, don't case. Look at me, look at them, I know. You know, is know. is horrifying. It's awful. It's it you want to talk about objectifying women, you know, we this has got to be like one of the worst examples of it ever. Oh, you know, let's just as a quick side note, I got called a Trump trash the other day. Yeah. Um, because I dared mention on my Twitter that Ted Cruz allegedly had um, five affairs, yeah. and a man who a religious man who tells women what to do with their body and allegedly has five affairs. I'm supposed to be surprised, and then someone um, then attacked what? me. For murdering babies from that. <laughs> there's some there's some very weird connections. How did we being go from there? talking I, about what Ted Cruz is doing with his dick to know. me what I do with my body? It's like, are you serious? Why why I, come back at me? Uh, We're talking about Ted right now, not me, sweetie. And then she called me Trump trash. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, now, moving on to our next news article. I just had to slip that little We've got two. Thing in there. <laughs> okay, good. We've got. Uh... Are we done with the? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we're definitely moving on from from the abortion. Because I blew thing up now. too much. Is that? No, what we're no, on? no, not at all. I think we I made got our a little point. too excited. No, I think I, I think we've beat everybody over the head with our point, and I think well, they, I, can't I wait think they for get the it. Comments. And you know what? You always get the emails with the comments and stuff. I I I don't. I want, I, I got I want, nothing on I want that. someone to complain to me. Tell, t- tell me your there argument that doesn't have anything to do with religion about abortion, against abortion, please. We're very interested in this Can't one. Wait. And, and interested to see any opposing views or, or arguments made against some of the things that we've said here. Um, yeah, that are non-religious in nature. I'd be very interested in seeing that. Because um, we always are open to learning more, actually. So, I'm interested. You're... No, really. But we'll see what comes. Now, following on the line of what we talked about a couple weeks ago with the South. Um, what do we do now? No, well, no, 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 no. This is interesting. Um, you know, we talked about oh, this the, is what we did. the reasons for, you know, the Civil War and that sort of thing being states' rights. And we're seeing a couple of articles this week coming out of Mississippi that are right on the spirit of that, Right. Mississippi's uh, legislature and Mississippi's governor apparently have a real problem with some of the um, decisions from the Supreme Court and from uh, Obama and et cetera. And so they are attempting to, the Mississippi Senate is taking matters into its own hands in a pretty horrifying way. Um, And we got two articles on this. The first one is this article from um, author John Wright. It says, breaking, horrific anti-LGBT religious freedom bill passes Mississippi legislature. And um, basically what we have here is um, the Mississippi Senate approved a sweeping anti-LGBT religious freedom bill late Wednesday. And they were, it's going to go from the Senate back to the House to cor- correct something. And then it goes to Governor Phil Bryant, um, who has expressed support for this bill. The Senate voted 31 to 17 to approve it. It's called the Protecting Freedom of Conscience from Government Discrimination Act, which would allow individuals, businesses, government employees, nonprofits, and other entities to discriminate against not only LGBT people, but also anyone who's had extramarital sex based on their sincerely held religious beliefs. Now, here's a couple quotes about this. Um... Human Rights Campaign President Chad Griffin said, This legislation moves Mississippi backward, undermining equality for its residents and jeopardizing its ability to attract and retain fair-minded businesses. Governor Bryant should be paying close attention to the backlash against discrimination in Georgia, where Governor Nathan Deal vetoed a terrible anti-LGBT bill, and in North Carolina, where fair-minded people in the broader business community are calling on state leaders 
to repudiate and repeal the discriminatory law passed last week. Okay, but that takes like football and Disney money. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, he goes on to say Mississippi's it economy works. and its reputation hang in the balance, right? Um, also, another another guy, the director of Project One America, which is an LGBT advocacy group, said this is probably the worst religious freedom bill to date. Now, Branning, Jennifer, Senator Jennifer Branning is the one who introduced this bill, and she said it was drafted in response to the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in favor of same-sex marriage last June. So this is Mississippi's direct response to the Supreme Court of the United States saying that you can't discriminate based on sexual preference. They said, oh yeah? No, we can. And Jennifer Branning says, this isn't a bill to allow any type of discrimination at all. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. It's about protecting the religious freedom of those who don't feel they can, with a clean conscience, assist a same-sex couple. Now, just to get right to the point on this, Democratic Senator Derek Simmons, who's black, spoke against the bill, invoking Mississippi's long history of racial discrimination. He said, Can we afford, with Mississippi's dark past, can we afford in 2016 to pass anything that can be construed as discrimination? People were actually taken brutally from their homes and they were killed based upon what some considered to be this is my religious belief, based on we don't want any mixing of the races. Now that had a lot of religious backing, the idea that blacks were not equal or human beings, mm -hmm. had a lot of passages in the Bible used to justify that. Mm -hmm. Right? That's just, that's just historic fact. It's not my opinion. I'm not, I'm not down on religion for this. I'm saying that people who are religious use the Bible to justify their religious bigotry, and now they're using the Bible to justify their sexual bigotry. It's off the rails. So here's what will happen. In about 50 years when all this shit is over with and we're done, and we have decided that uh, discriminating against people based on who they want to have sex with or who they want to spend their lives with, um, Religious people will go back and say, oh, well, those Bible passages were just interpreted wrong. And every secular person on the planet will be like, are you freaking serious again? Again. We're, there, it, it's really just someone's interpretation and they're using the Bible in a fictitious manner to try to... That's, see, that's what I think. I think you have a bunch of, a, 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 a small group of people who are using their religious texts in, a, in an out-of-context, horrible manner to justify, no, let, basically, let their me, discriminatory hatred. Let me, I mean, let that's me, what I think. Let me just make something very clear here. I don't like the Bible. I think it's a terribly written, horrible, awful, disgusting book. I'm sorry. I've read it multiple times. Please do not email me and tell me to read it. I have read it. That's why I'm an atheist. That's why a lot of us are atheists, because we've read the damn thing. It is a terrible book to be getting morals from. It really is. And as a whole, well, it you, really you'll, is. you'll get a lot of disagreement on that. Oh, yeah, There's no, a no, lot no, of I'm people sure who will. think that there are very moral passages. No, I'm sure. Passages but but I do understand that there are definitely people out there who use the Bible and interpret it and tweak the wordings just the way that they want to make it say the things that they want. Exactly. And then they use that as a justification. And I think that, um, I think we should make that point because I think people who don't have discriminatory, bigoted views because of their religious beliefs should call these people out yeah. who use the Bible for this purpose. Where are you? Show you're not racially or sexually bigoted and that you're like, believe in actual human rights and and civil rights mm -hmm. and call these people out on their BS because it is BS to use the Bible or use religion to, you know, justify hatred. But, so I'm, you I'm know, cool. and, and, and going back to Mississippi here, as a Southerner from two very crazy states, Florida is like the wacko shit crazy and Louisiana is just the plain old weird. Mississippi is like that racist aunt that everybody has 
who you hope that no one just listens to, at all to what she's saying. Like, you're hoping that there's so much else going on outside of the world that no one hears the crazy ass shit she's saying. That's Mississippi, okay? Um, Mississippi is one of the last states in the union when it comes to education, when it comes to health. 45th in education. 45th. Yeah. When it comes to health, when it comes to teenage pregnancies, it's way up there. When it comes to, and it's going to sound hypocritical of me because I'm a big girl, when it comes to obesity, they're one of the top ones up there. But, and, and so, and I, I wonder if that contributes to this. Well, it certainly could be, these certainly could be factors, right? Um you know, I'm not going to sit here and say everybody in Mississippi or try to generalize all people in Mississippi because I'm sure there's people oh. who listen to this in Mississippi who have lots of good things to, yeah, and, you know, and, say you know, and think and whatnot. But, but I, just, I have to, I, I always have to clarify myself on that. Whenever I go, oh, God damn it, Texas. I always have to remember we have some great listeners in Texas. We do. We have some great people in Texas. And I'm from Louisiana and partially Florida, and I have wonderful people in there, wonderful atheists, secular, even wonderful Christian friends out there. All of Mississippi is not that racist ant. It's just a vast majority, and the people who freaking pass laws like this are the ones who are running the state. And unfortunately, right now, that's the face that we get. You have to wonder about the Mississippi Senate and about the governor. That is for sure, because these people are the ones who are writing this legislation and pushing it forward. You, you, and you, gotta you really got to wonder where their head's at. You got to think that someone is talking to the governor and saying, we are going to lose some tourism money for Well, us. on that point, I'm actually going to predict right now. I will make a prediction. Right, we're we're talking about this right now while the legislation is still going through the uh, back to the house, then up, then up to the governor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to predict that this is not going to pass. That we're talking about proposed legislation that has made it through the Senate and would pass, except for the fact that I think business is going to stop this, just like it did in the other states. Well, okay, and I think that's what's going to happen. And I and I think just because of the, um, I I agree with you. I I can only hope for so much, but I think because it's such a hot button issue with LGBT um, that it's going to stop that. If this were, say, like in Louisiana, had the Louisiana Science Education Act, which basically allows science teachers to bring outside material to teach opposingly to, evolu to evolution, yeah, that kind of flew under the radar. The fact that this one is such a... A buzzword of yeah. I can't think of a, a better if, word. If right only now. It's science, a hot thing. if only science was such a hot button, we can hope. We I can't can... even be mad at you on that one. That's a damn good point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, also in Mississippi this week, whole different bill that is also going through, um, and this one just is really crazy this one is really really nuts and i also don't mississippi? i don't know that this one's gonna make it all the way through but it's going through right now and i'm that sorry is, did you say also mississippi also in mississippi this is why everyone's here in the crazy ant because you mm. won't shut up yeah the hell? The, i know the mississippi senate just passed a bill that would allow churches to train members to carry guns and act as security guards during religious services and exempt them from legal action if they use their weapons. Okay, wait. Okay. So, I, okay, so I don't have an argument with them wanting to have a security guard. In fact, I think it's very sad that they feel that they need to have a security guard. But if they feel they need to have a security guard, fine. You want to train someone to have a, to have a, okay, deal, fine. You, you want to hire a professional? Okay, that's one thing. Deal. Right? That's not what this is. That's not what this is? What is this? Others, okay. Um, Sean Tyndall, as a Republican state senator, said, This will allow a church to have a sergeant at arms to protect the church body, just like we have in the legislature. Okay. Huh? It goes on to say that um, there was the massacre at the Charleston, South Carolina church as an example why they need armed guards. Okay. However, others have said that the Mississippi Church Protection Act crossed a line, especially since it does more than allow churches to have armed guards. That's not what this that's not the reason this is contentious. 
It said that it also legalizes concealed carry in a holster without a permit throughout the state, so-called constitutional carry, and prohibits state officials from enforcing any federal gun regulation not passed by Congress. Okay, get that, because I, I had to read that a few times myself before that became clear. It prohibits state officials from enforcing federal gun regulations that were not passed by Congress. Now, what sort of federal gun regulations don't get passed by Congress? The ones that get enacted by presidential executive orders. Those are federal gun regulations. So, in other words, this state, Mississippi, is exerting state rights to deny the president and his, and his executive orders. Okay? So, one senator said that we don't need to pimp out the church for political purposes. If you want to pass laws to liberalize gun laws, do that, but don't use the church to do it. Uh, Frazier, um, this was um, State Senator Hillman Frazier said that, right? Uh -huh. So the law would require churches or other places of worship to provide training for the armed member or members. That person, and this is the real crux of it here, that person would then be immune from civil prosecution when using the weapon in church if the action in question occurs during the reasonable exercise of and within the course and scope of the member's official duties as a member of the security program for the church or place of worship. So, you shoot somebody, no civil prosecution can occur under this law. That's crazy. The Mississippi Police Chiefs Association blasted the bill, particularly the part that eliminated the need to obtain permits for concealed carry. Right? Um, Ken Winter, executive director of the MPCA, uh, which is the Mississippi Police Chiefs Association, said, by effectively dismantling Mississippi's licensing system, this bill would block law enforcement who stop an armed suspect from confirming that he isn't a violent criminal, severely mentally ill, or otherwise dangerous. This bill would put law enforcement officers and all Mississippians directly in harm's way. So, okay. So, they're calling but, these guys the soldiers of God. These people who would be trained up to do this. Jesus right? Christ. They're building a friggin' army. They're Literally. Building, okay. And you know what? Right. And these, you know, he added here, right? Um, okay. This guy, Larry Decker, the um, Secular Coalition for America, mm -hmm. uh, said religious institutions are already exempt from taxation, financial transparency, and many civil rights laws. The Mississippi Church Protection Act would constitute an unprecedented and dangerous next step. So, so okay, just, just, just let, 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 let me let me get this straight in my head. Yeah. Church decides they want to have a sergeant or arms, whatever the hell they're yeah. going to call it. Fine. Yeah. Armed. Armed. Concealed whatever. carry. Yeah. What kind of training does this person have to go through? Just says it has that the that the church pays for the guy's training. It doesn't specifically it doesn't specify okay. from the article that I read here. Okay. Um who can he shoot? Anyone. Like if someone if someone uh were presenting a threatening stance of some kind, you know what I mean? Like somebody like he's okay, he's and, there and, to guard the church. So whatever a security guard would do in the course of his duties, so this person would do. He he can't have any civil action taken against him. What about criminal action? Sure. Yeah, this it specifies civil civil action. I mean if you murder somebody, you 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 know, yeah. that's gonna be investigated. You you shoot somebody it's going to get investigated. It doesn't mean that it's not going to get investigated. Right. But he can't be, say, sued by the family for wrongful termination, right? Wrongful death. Uh, like, no civil action could occur. Because that often happens. I mean, it's right. kind of no, quiet. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. don't realize that. But yeah, no. it happens a lot, right? I, well, I mean, most famously, I think that people can remember is that it happened in the O.J. Simpson, Nicole, Sim Nicole Brown case. Mm. Um, he was tried criminally. Um, found the innocent, and then the Nicole Brown Simpson's family sued him civilly, and they actually won that case. And well, there you go. Um, so, so yeah, that, that happens so, all the time. That happens yeah. all the time. So none so, of that, none of that civil suit would be allowed to happen under this law, 
And also the other that th that's bad. And the other thing that's bad is, of course, these guys can conceal carry without a permit, without licensing, without law enforcement, you know, I, it doing what it's supposed to be doing. And the other part of this bill is cancels any presidential executive orders on the matter because, hey, we just don't have to listen. This is this is again this is classic Southern mentality states rights what versus federal no, rights I'm kidding, I'm kidding. right which we talked about yeah, you know no, 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 and I... and you know there's arguments for there's arguments against in terms of that whole thing but in this case they're getting it wrong this is not the way to but do it I yeah. I just I don't this, this sounds to me like there's no precedent for why this even came about like no it's just Mississippi is flexing its muscles because they don't like what the what the president is doing with gun rights and so they the, also but only, they also had a, sh a church shot up and they're like well what are we going to do about this or no, was that no no it's in southern and in no, south, south carolina that happened and right. these guys and, are responding and, and, and to i'm that. just saying it didn't even there's no precedent because it didn't even happen in mississippi no not in mississippi no. um no this is just something they're doing as a as a result of this but stuff. but but why just do it in churches i mean why not make well, because it's the Mississippi Church Protection Act. Well, no, I'm saying if if they're trying to go around gun control or whatever. Well, that's one acts, of the. That why was, are they going through to, through the churches? That's why one. That's why one person was quoted in this thing as saying, um, that if you want to pass laws, this is why William Fraser, one of the state senators, said, if you want to pass laws to liberalize gun laws, do that, but don't use the church to do that. Uh -huh. so that's what they're doing. They're using okay. the church as a way okay, of okay, okay. liberalizing gun laws throughout well, the state. I, I, just, I just want to know what their, what their long-term goals are here. I Soldiers mean, of God. No, no, I mean, like, if, if, if they're starting in the churches, do they think, well, no, we have it in churches, so now we'll just have it in this township? Townships can do this now? No, they won't need the big it. Cities? They'll just the, the, the church will just name 20, 30, 40 people as you know protectors yeah, but they can only of the do church it on the church ground. No, 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 what? no. This is concealed carry anywhere. They, what? It's very liberal wording. It's very loose as to what is or isn't church purposes, or because it doesn't just it just does not just apply to the time of a church service. What? Yeah, this can be very loosely interpreted to. Any church function or anything that can be construed to like be a church a function. Like they're having a picnic in the park and right. shoot a homeless person or yeah, something? Yeah, exactly. Are you freaking serious? No, I have very wide latitude here. I was under the this. impression that this was just solely during, nope. you know, a... God, what are they called anymore? Church services? Uh, services. Yeah, it, no. I've been an atheist for a long time. Wow, really <laughs> long time. I used to go to church three times a week. Wow, well, look at this. Wow. Um, I, I literally thought that it was during service on church grounds. No. Because that's is, me. I'd be like, yeah, whatever. Just don't go there. What? Yeah. No, this is being interpreted as, the because of the wording of it, very loosely. Okay, that's petrifying. This this is this is full-blown insane. Yeah. That's why we're talking about it. And so. I'm, I'm going down there tomorrow. <laughs> well, you'll have fun down there now. You I'm going to be very close to the Mississippi state line. Where where I'm going? In well, the law is not enacted yet, and we'll see with this controversy if it's going to be. I I, I mean I'm not even going to make a prediction on this one, but I think this has a better chance of actually passing this than is, this is the um, than the well, LGBT I mean, if, one. If this one passes, then who's to say like another another state is going to start pulling this? Because now they have a precedent. It was like this one this one passed. Why not us? Right, and it's you know. It's just more of the nonsense. I'm not okay with that. I'm not either because I'm not okay with some random person who just happens to be a church member getting concealed carry without law enforcement, uh, enforcing regulations that already don't do the job well enough right. as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, I mean, this just goes so far beyond the beyond. All right. So that is that news story for the week. All right. And uh, now we're going to get into the uh, last part of our show. Okay. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What All right. Last week we talked about um, the Senate and Congress and uh, the, what was that, the 455 people or something or the 545 people that... Rule I our lives. I probably know that number, and, but I don't. And all of the the policymakers, basically, and we I'm, 
I read that her. article from uh, from Charlie about that. And 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 uh, you know we we're we've been talking for quite a while now about the idea that that Senate reelections are occurring, congressional mm-hmm. reelections are occurring, and those are very very important. Um, a commenter, covert white rabbit. <laughs> uh, sent me a link to, um, which I'm going to put in the show notes uh, here today, to a video and a study that was done. And I actually got. He's so is, proud of study. himself. He's so proud of himself that he did homework. I did my homework. This um, article was mar- written by, uh, or study rather, was written by Martin Gillens and Benjamin Page. And Martin Gillens is a professor of politics at Princeton mm-hmm. University. And, uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's something. And Benjamin Page is a professor of decision-making at Northwestern University. And they did this study. Also, ooh. Yeah. Basically, the idea of this study is, and the point that Covert White Rabbit was making was, that Congress doesn't represent the constituency, and they never have and never care to, because that's not who pays them, which is an interesting point. Um and the study that was done that sort of kind of backs up that conclusion is um, perspective on politics, okay? And um, basically the idea is that research was done that shows out of, out of research was done over 1,779 policy issues carried out over a 20-year period that basically proved out that the economic elite are um, the, the major influencers of policy changes, whether that's policy that gets passed or whether they're influencing policy to not be passed because they don't like that particular policy. Um, and the run-of-the-mill people that you, me, the normal Joe, have real no influence on policy getting passed one way or the other whether you know none of us want the policy to pass or whether all of us want the policy to pass doesn't really matter 30 percent of the time that policy is getting passed yeah right whereas the the statistical line that shows the economic elite meaning those who are making i think the study talks about two hundred and fifty thousand or more a year we're not talking about just the one percent but this economic elite group um, what they favor, what they want in policy is um, much more frequently passed, right? And this is all explained in the video that I'm putting the link to, but I wanted to um, talk about this because it does tend to put a little bit of, a, burst my bubble a little bit about uh, my, you know, optimistic belief in, in our system and our democracy. Um, Welcome you know, to America, where the laws are made up and the votes don't matter. That is definitely what this uh, study shows, right? Is when you have, uh, you know, the the majority rule or the majority democracy idea uh, versus what the elites want, you know. And this is purely economic elites. This is not, um, this is just by income bracket is how the, the data of the study was done. They got hold of all this information over 20 years, which included income brackets. And that's how they were able to break down statistically policy changes against what these various people in these various income brackets wanted. A couple of points I'll just mention that I thought were very interesting as part of the study um, that I highlighted. Sorry. He's gonna oh yeah, it's as far as as far as um, special interest groups go, they were factored into this, right? Two kinds of special interest groups, meaning those that are like mass appeal special interest groups versus business or corporate special interest groups, right? Like a special interest group that might be mass broad appeal might be um, a, a special interest group pushing for lobbying for Planned Parenthood. That's that's not business. Or corporate business or corporate would be say the defense industry right um, and net the and and combined you can see the special interest groups there's this idea that we have so many special interest groups covering so many different topics or specialities that 
they probably sort of average out to what the American public want. And if you have that idea, guess what? You're totally wrong. I mean, could not be more wrong. Um, the net interest group stands are not substantially correlated with the preferences of average citizens. Um, this is just depressing. Yeah, nor do we find that the association, an association between the preferences of the economic elites and the alignments of the mass based or business oriented groups. In other words, these the, the economic elites are not the guys who are aligned with the special interest groups either. These special interest groups are kind of just doing their own thing as a body or as a whole, and it doesn't reflect what the economic elites want or what the average citizens want, which I found fascinating. So, um, for example, just get real specific here. For example, economic elites tend to prefer lower levels of government spending on practically everything, while business groups and specific industries frequently lobby for spending in areas from which they stand to gain. So those are two completely polar opposite views, right? Pharmaceutical, hospital, insurance, medical organizations have lobbied for more spending on health care, defense contractors for weapon systems, that sort of thing, well, right? That kind of makes sense. It does make sense. It's their industry. They want the government to spend more money in there, of course. Exactly. So that's where special interest interests uh, diverge from what we want as people and what the economic elite want. Um, and this is... This is um, like I said, this has to do specifically with wealth, right? Um, our, and he says here, our evidence clearly indicates uh, that organized interest groups have a very substantial independent impact upon public policy. So if you were going to do a hierarchy or you're going to do a ladder of influence on what gets passed or doesn't get passed in the government, you would have us at the bottom. Then you'd have mass interest groups, then you'd have business interest groups, corporate business, corporate lobbyists, mm -hmm. then you have the economic elite. That's how this thing breaks down. Mm -hmm. um, now, and just so you know that this isn't always, this isn't always for policy, sometimes this is against proposed policy changes, and in fact, with the interest groups, more often than not, they're trying to stop legislation from going through, more so than they're trying to create new legislation. Um, and, of course, most of the special interest groups out there, according to this study, are business-oriented or corporate-oriented. So it's simply, it says here later on, it's simply not the case that a host of diverse, broadly-based interest groups take policy stands and bring about actual policies that reflect what the general public wants. Interest groups as a whole do not seek the same policies as average citizens do. These business groups are far more numerous and active. They spend much more money, and they tend to get their way. So, bottom line here at the end of the thing, what do our findings say about democracy in America? <laughs> they certainly constitute troubling news for advocates of populistic democracy who want governments to respond primarily or exclusively to the policy preferences of their citizens. In the United States, our findings indicate the majority does not rule at least not in the causal sense of actually determining policy outcomes. When a majority of citizens disagrees with economic elites or with organized interests, they generally lose. So, just wanted to kind of... Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not... I, I'm not falling out of my chair shocked or Of course not. Here. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners aren't either. They're probably like, yeah, Chris, what else is new? Yeah, but at the same time, it really does make it sound like a total bummer about our voting process. Yeah. But that's not going to stop me from doing it. Of course not. That's, and it never that should. That should be the takeaway from this. A oh, no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. There's no message of apathy here. Um, the group that, one of the groups that put this together, and in fact, the link I'm going to put in our notes below, is to a video to a group that is actively trying to do something about this through, mm -hmm. through, um, local city state um statutes they believe that they can um stop the corruption that is currently legal in our system that creates the sort of problems that we have where right. the government doesn't listen to us right right the government officials don't respond to what their constituents want for the most part because they really don't care 
about that. And that's a very broad statement, but statistically speaking, it's a true statement. And now that I've got um, a bit more understanding of this from a statistical and evidence-based study, I feel more confident in making that pronouncement, whereas before it sort of felt just sort of, you know, opinion-y, you know what right. I mean? I'm in a bad mood, so, rah, the government never listens to us, rah, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> so the, can you do that again? Just rah, <laughs> sort of the Archie Bunker take on thing, you know, rah, you know, it's guys, it's government, rah. You know, and I'm not trying to walk down some conspiracy path here either. This is just how the system has evolved. Right. And it's what we got. And, and so the takeaway from this is don't don't feel discouraged about it. Start in on a grassroots level, your local um, governments, mm -hmm. um, and that's how it builds up to the whole. That's right. That's how everything builds. If you want, you know, if you want a real interesting study in history and government and populist government, look at how prohibition was passed. It took, it took over a decade of work to get it at a national level where a constitutional amendment actually happened. It didn't take that long to repeal it because it was so disastrous, but it was a very interesting, it's, a, it's an interesting history lesson in, in civics and how a grassroots movement actually can build up to national levels to influence national government. So that can happen with this too. We don't have to have a violent which, revolution. We can have a nonviolent one. Which is essentially what Mississippi is trying to do with their gun laws. Don't you think? They are. And I, and I don't knock them for their right to do it. I actually right. don't. I'm, I'm, I just wanted I'm, to make this point here because it sounded a tad hypocritical of us for just a moment. Just a moment. We but the specifics, like, you know. Um, getting all up on, on Mississippi for trying to go around like the federal. Okay. Uh... I applaud them for it. It's just what they're doing is freaking stupid. Basically, that's exactly the point. There was no effort on my part to tell Mississippi what they can or can't do as right. a state. I actually kind of like states' rights in a number of ways. But when you're I trying mean, to Colorado arm citizens to be able to stuff. shoot people without like, like without following gun laws, yeah, that's... no way. Forget it. You never get in my vote. Absolutely Forget it. Not. Right. But it's just... I. I just had to point out that little moment there yeah, <laughs> that true. we had. Um, true. But, but yeah, I don't think that Chris and I can say this enough, that voting still counts. Being involved in the political process still counts. Um, this information was definitely a bummer. Um, but I, I, like we both said, it wasn't a surprise bummer. It was just that, ah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now it's kind of, that's kind of like, yeah, that's how it is. So. Right. We gotta, we gotta, we're gonna change it. We gotta change it. We gotta yeah, do something about it. So you can't wallow in bad news. You really have to take it and try to fix it, because that's what this needs. This needs fixing. Exactly, big time fixing. Uh, okay, and with that, we have reached the end of our show. Thank God. <laughs> wow. So, uh, thank you very much for coming around and listening to our nonsense and uh, various opinions and takes on things. We really appreciate you guys listening. We want your feedback. We want your comments. In the comment section I'm below. I'm supposed to point. <laughs> People who aren't, who aren't watching us are like, what? What is she talking about pointing? Yeah, I know. Chris points. I point. He points point. every single time to show people where comments are. I do. It's point just a habit down. I have. So um, <laughs> if you have any feedback for us individually, you can email me, chris at sensiblyspeaking.com. Or ruth at sensiblyspeaking.com. Please don't get mad at me about the whole Bible bit. <laughs> All right, guys, and uh, we look forward to uh, start making your plans for Reason Rally because uh, it's happening. It's going to be great. Not Dawkins is going to be there. Yeah, I'm not a fanboy for him, but but I am I am <laughs> interested in getting uh, uh, getting Johnny Depp's uh, autograph. If I, I can do Bill that, Nye's I'll be happy. Bill Nye is going to be there too. You want to go have a conversation with him? Oh, do <laughs> I ever? Hey, Bill, let's talk about philosophy. After I literally get finished and kissing I'm, his feet. I want him to be like, deadpan about it. <laughs> <laughs> After I literally finish kissing his feet in awe of, of Bill Nye's awesomeness, I, I, want, will, I, will, I will say that. I want one of his bow ties. That'd be awesome. <gasps> we should bring a bow tie and have him sign it. <laughs> We're working out plans, folks. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, y'all.